This is Seven National News and in our top story. The court of the Fajerut ruler has announced the death of Sheikh Fatima bin Rashid al Nuaimi, the mother of His Highness Sheikh Hamad bin Muhammad al Sharqi, member of the Supreme Council and ruler of Fajerah, and sister of His Highness Sheikh Hamad bin Rashid al Nuaimi, the member of the Supreme Council and ruler of Ajman. The ruler's court has extended its deepest condolences to Sheikh Hamad bin Muhammad al Sharqi, Sheikh Muhammad bin Hamad bin Muhammad al Sharqi, the Crown Prince of Fajerah, and the al Sharqi family. The court announced a three-day mourning period in Fujairah, during which flags will fly at half-mast. The Ajman's ruler's court has also extended its condolences to the ruler of Ajman, ruler of Fujairah, and to the an Nuaymi and Ash-Sharqi families. Ajman will also observe a three-day mourning period. The Emirates Red Crescent is continuing to distribute humanitarian aid to Syrian refugees in Jordan as part of the initiative of, of Her Highness Sheikh Fatima bin Mubarak to provide for the winter needs for refugees. The aid is being distributed in cooperation with the UAE Embassy in Amman, the Emirati Relief Team and the Jordanian Red Crescent Society, along with a number of international humanitarian organizations working in the Jordanian arena. A delegation from the ERC, chaired by Dr. Hamdan Musallam al mazroui the chairman of the board of directors of the ERC, participated in the distribution that benefits about 14,000 Syrian refugees inside and outside camps in Jordan. Dr. al mazroui praised the role of Her Highness Sheikh Fatima bint Mubarak in the protection and care of refugees around the world and said that her attention to the humanitarian situation for Syrian refugees confirms her diligent follow-up of the latest developments and implications of the challenges they currently face. Dr. al Mazrui stressed that such generous initiatives enhance the international community's efforts to overcome difficulties and provide greater care for the refugees. The Hamdan bin Muhammad Heritage Center revealed earlier today the details of Wathiqati, a recently launched initiative that aims to preserve and archive historical documents and collectibles. At a press conference, the committee in charge of the initiative outlined an extensive list of acceptable documentation, such as formal and informal letters, manuscripts dating back to different eras, contracts, photos, maps, treaties, laws and ancient texts. This also includes autobiographies, certificates, permits issued by governmental and non-governmental institutions, audio and video interviews, as well as other archival material. At present, the centre has collected nearly 100 documents, which have been electronically archived. The Wathikati Initiative aims to serve as a central resource to preserve archival data related to the UAE's history and heritage, as well as assist in making it available to the world. Different committees have been set up to oversee the collection, cataloging, reproduction and electronic preservation. Legal procedures have already been put in place to register ownership rights and issue certificates of appreciation from the Hamdan bin Muhammad Heritage Center. More important for this kind of uh, work is the public because they have a lot of things. We need the things which is not in the in the offices where we done like uh, we don't want it in the in the diwa or in the municipality we have it we need the things which is in the people with the people if they have uh, some papers if they have uh, some pictures if they have uh, some uh, videotape if they have uh, something which is let us saying we didn't have it on the on the our department in in in, in the government the Centre's Director of Research and Studies, Dr. Amina Khamis al dahiri says they aim to conserve available historical documentation in order to preserve the intellectual, scientific and cultural heritage of the UAE. Through this initiative, they will be able to protect them from damage and loss. We're going to study and research the old documents, the old pictures, and then this would definitely add a lot to, to, the, uh, to the history, especially that most of the uh, history of the UAE is not documented. Most of it is oral, and this would definitely help us to, to get um, kind of a solid uh, information. The Dubai Police Traffic Department recorded 7,691 speeding cases till the end of November this year. That involved motorists that exceeded the allowed speed limit by more than 60 kilometers an hour. 
Commenting on the statistics, the director of Dubai Police Traffic Department, Colonel Saif Mohair al mazrui stated that any vehicle whose owner fails, fails to pay fines worth more than 5,000 dirhams will be confiscated and denied renewal. al mazrui also noted during a press conference on the sidelines of the Speed Kills campaign that the traffic department is currently testing a new smart radar system that can identify speed and capture speeding vehicles that slow down as soon as they approach the radar. This radar can also detect drivers who don't leave safe distance, tailgate and overtake suddenly. Speaking about the Speed Kills campaign, al mazrui stated that it was a huge success, registering more than 10,000 attendees in five days. The traffic patrols also brought in speeding drivers who attended lectures and watched video clips which illustrate the dangers of deadly clashes resulting from excessive speeding. And Emirates Post Group has revised the rates of some of its services, including an increase in annual subscription fees for individual PO boxes and a reduction in rates of parcels. Announcing the revision in rates, Ibrahim bin Karram, the Chief Commercial Officer of Emirates Post Group, said that the revision in rates was necessitated by the improvements made to the services and also to cope with increased operating costs. Under the revised plan, the annual subscription of an individual PO box has been increased from 200 dirhams to 250 dirhams with bundled value addition of the eShar SMS notification service whenever there is incoming barcoded mail as well as online access to the PO box to enable the customer to view scanned images of received mail. As far as parcels are concerned, Mr. Bin Karam said that during 2014 there has been a 20% increase in parcels sent via Emirates Post offices and 25% in express mail. Therefore, Emirates Post had reduced the parcel rates to, for its surface parcel service, air parcel service and express mail service to destinations in the Indian subcontinent, all destinations in Europe and all destinations in the Philippines. And finally, in the bulletin. A new world record has been set in Dubai on Sunday night. Motorsports enthusiasts came out in full force to witness the exhilarating event at the Global Village. Nissan Middle East set a new Guinness World Record for the longest twin vehicle drifting. Two Nissan 370Z cars drifted around the track at the Global Village simultaneously without stopping for 28.52 kilometers. The minimum distance required to break the record was 25 kilometers. Nissan has been an integral part of motorsports in the region through the Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge and the successful yearly GT Academy initiative. The Nissan 370Z Drift Experience is the latest addition in partnership with ProDrift, a company that aims to teach people the art of drifting in a safe environment. Nissan Middle East's managing director Samir Sharfan says they've seen the evolution and rise in popularity of drifting since the first regional competition launched in 2009. And this has significantly grown to be one of the most awaited events across the Middle East, with over 15,000 attendees per country. 14-time Middle East rally champion, FIA vice president and president of the Automobile and Touring Club for the UAE, Mohammed bin Sulaim, also spoke at the event about the importance of motorsport in the UAE and the region. Uh, I think we uh, should be... Um uh, recognizing uh, the uh, motorsport, there's no way anybody can pass by this region and deny motorsport in the region, especially in the UAE. We just had the 36th uh, anniversary of our uh, uh, Dubai International Rally. We are having next year the 25th anniversary of the World Cup, which is the Desert Challenge that you have seen it in the, um, it's a, a big event. The DNA of Nissan in motorsport is for 80 years and in this region, uh, we are engaged in motorsport for 25 years with the cross-country rally, uh, the Nissan Patrol in cross-country rally. And we have added in the last years two, pro two platforms, the GT Academy platform, which offers to any youth uh, on PlayStation uh, the opportunity to become a, a professional driver. And also a special partnership with the best in the region, the FIA with the Young Emirates and Pro Drift Academy for the drifting. Celebrations continued following the official announcement of the new world record set. One of the two drivers involved in the record attempt was James Dean, a 23-year-old professional drift driver from Ireland who is among the most decorated drifters in the world. We were brought out here to uh, Dubai to try this amazing, uh, try to break an amazing world record which is the longest tandem twin drift uh, ever. So. 
huge challenge, first of all, because you need two really good drivers, you need two really good cars. Uh, reliability is very important. Uh, luckily, we had reliable Nissans with us, and um, we went for it, and uh, yeah, we broke, we broke, we went over 25 kilometers, uh, non-stop tandem drifting, so with, without any mistakes, and oh, it was, it was so difficult to do, like, to main, maintain that concentration for so long was really tough, but uh, Ahmed Doham, a great driver, and I, I was chasing him, and I could really rely on his driving, so it made me following uh, a lot easier, but it's a huge challenge, oh man, it's, it's been an amazing experience and I can't believe uh, we hold a Guinness World Record, it's, it's, it's awesome.